Hi, this is Jeanette McIntosh of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Florida Realty, here with another segment on my transition series. The previous vi videos was on being a first time home buyer and then upsizing. This video is on downsizing, which I am sure we will mostly agree it can be very stressful. There's the memories that the home may hold, the feeling of having to let go of something we have loved so much, the trepidation of what the next episode in our life is going to be like. I am here to help you understand what steps to take so that the process will not seem so overwhelming and traumatic. I personally believe that any time a person puts a house up for sale, the packing and organizing should be started before the house is put up for sale, not when an offer is accepted. It definitely should start before the pictures are taken. This is definitely the case when one is considering downsizing. When you first start considering the fact that you want to downsize, look at your house objectively. Where can you start paring down the things that you own? What things will not bother you at all to get rid of? For example, when I wanted to put my house up for sale, I had this large room with a really large bookcase in it, which was completely filled with books, accrued over the 20 years I had lived there. The first time I just took the books that I'd had no bond with. They were nice, I had read them maybe even a couple of times, but it really wouldn't bother me if I no longer owned them. So I took them up and took them to the library and donated them. I waited a couple weeks and then I came back and looked at my bookcase again. I was now comfortable with the fact there were holes in the bookcase. And so I went through the books again and grabbed more books and took them to the library. I did this three more times after that, giving books away, giving it time, looking at them objectively again, and then giving more away. Finally, I was down to a manageable amount of books that I absolutely wanted to read one more time. I loved these books. I was not going to give them away. I wanted to keep them. So that is what you need to do with your possessions. You pack up the things that are easy to get rid of. Get used to the space. Now come back. See what else you're now ready to give away. It can usually all be done in small steps. Also that you don't have to do this by yourself. Sometimes it is easier to have someone else come and tell you what needs to be cleared. You can ask your realtor to come and give you ideas, but I have found that not every realtor is comfortable doing this task. So you may want to consider contacting a local staging company. Some will offer as one of their services to come look at your house and give their recommendation on how to best present your house using your items. Our local staging company charges $150 to do that service, a service I consider invaluable. When you're ready to get a bit more serious about downsizing, you may want to consider actually going to look at smaller homes if you haven't done so already. You want to get a good idea of how small you want to go, how many rooms you envision your new residence to have. This will help you when deciding what can stay and what will need to go. Also, if there is a chance you may want to eventually take some items to a thrift shop, reach out to the local thrift shops to find out what their process is. Will they come to your house to pick up? Do your items have to be pre-approved before they will even schedule you? Do they have prerequisites about what they will or will not pick up? How long of a wait time do they have for scheduling a pickup? If I am talking to a thrift shop for a customer who, who has a long wait time for pickup, I go ahead and schedule a pickup two or three months down the road. I can always cancel. This is good for a couple of reasons. I have given myself an end date to have the organizing done. If more time is needed, I can always call and reschedule, but otherwise they'll be ready to pick up when the house is ready for them to come and pick up the items. I do put a reminder on my phone's calendars two weeks before pickup that there are two weeks left to go. If the packing is behind schedule, then I will either work a little faster or call at that time to reschedule. Once you are ready to tackle getting your house ready to sell and to start downsizing your belongings, decide where you want to be able to store the items temporarily 
while you clear up your house. Maybe there's an extra room in the house that has not been used very much that would be perfect for this. Or more likely, it will probably be the garage. Let's presume you've decided on the garage. That will be the first room you will need to declutter then. There needs to be room in there to put the items that you will be donating, contributing to a garage sale, or putting in storage. A holding cell, a temporary holding cell, if you will. I do advocate that the garage not be used as a permanent storage area once you list your house. I know people have different opinions on this, but I believe other than a few boxes that can be lying down on one side of the garage without blocking any access to storage cabinets, water heaters, or anything else, one should use another storage area besides the garage. For example, you may um, pack boxes inside standard closets rather than using the garage. People like to personally check out the garage. They like to envision their vehicles in there and their toolboxes. To many people, the garage is not just an extra room. It is an important and vital part of the house that they weigh in when considering what house they want to buy. Want to sell your house fast and get the best price for it? Let people see the possibilities in your house, both in, in the house and in the garage when showing it. Okay, so once your storage room is ready to be temporarily filled with other items, you are ready to start with the first room. You may want to start with the room that needs the most work, or you may decide you want to start with the easiest room and go from there. The right answer is the one that best works for you. As you start with each room, first take a moment to look at what you have in there. Are there a lot of trinkets out, personal pictures on the wall maybe, items above cupboards and cabinets, breaking the view from floor to ceiling? I love those racks that hang from the ceiling usually in the kitchen to hang your pots and pans or maybe your wine glasses. However, pictures with those racks should not be in the MLS. They make the kitchen look cluttered, and again, they break that view from floor to ceiling that makes the room look smaller. The cleaner the view is, the bigger a room will look. Leave the room feeling warm and welcoming without your personal touch. Allows the buyers to visualize its potential for them. Also, you don't want people to remember your house because of the things you own, but because they fell in love with your house. That is what will motivate them to make an offer. Next, consider how much you are hoping to downsize. How many less rooms are you going to be dealing with? The rooms themselves are going to be smaller. Will your couch, desk, bed, recliners all still work in your new home? Are you going to have as big of a yard? Maybe you'll have to get rid of all that yard working equipment. The answers to these questions will impact decisions you make as you get each room ready. You will have to decide how you will handle small items that will move with you, but will no longer be, be displayed in that room in that house. You can pack them as you go from room to room, or you can set them aside in your designated storage area for packing at a later time. After all, you're downsizing and you will have to rearrange where all your belongings go more than likely. So you might as well put all the trinkets in the same box or boxes. Decide what rooms um, items will be sold, what will be donated to a thrift shop, what will be given to family or friends. Before clearing up the rooms, do reach out to, to your family and friends and see if anybody wants any of the items you want to give away. If they can't come right away to pick it up, put a post-it on the items they want so that you can keep it all straight about where is going where. And if it's not too cumbersome to move, go ahead and get it out of the way and move it to the garage. After you've done all the pre-work, you are now start ready to start packing and moving items. Have a large um, garbage can close by to throw things away, have a box or bag ready for items to be donated or given away, and a box for items you're gonna keep but won't be remaining in the room. Remember, we want to minimize the amount of objects in any room. Now, start going through the rooms, putting items in any one of the three containers, 
or keep it in the room staged beautifully for the pictures that'll be taken of your house and when the house is being shown. When you have gone through all the rooms in the house, you can take the boxes of items to be donated to the thrift shop, or if you also have big items, confirm with the thrift shop when they are going to be coming to pick it up. Since everything should be in the temporary holding area, which right now we've decided is the garage, you can hold the garage sale or try the marketplace or some other sites on Facebook. Remember, you only want to start, store a few boxes along one free wall of your garage. You don't want it to be overwhelming with all your items in there. So you do want to find a storage place if you have more than just a few boxes to store it in the garage. Depending on what items you are storing and where you live, you may want to find a climate controlled storage space. Weigh again how much downsizing you will be doing and the cost of a storage unit against the emotional ties we have with so many of our belongings to make sure you're making the best decision for you about whether to keep it or whether to give those items away. Reach out to a realtor at this time also and start the conversation going. They may help you consider what other things you may want to do to your house. Painting the baseboards and door trim is a common task. Minimize the use of electrical cords around the house. Make sure the light bulbs work. If not, replace. Get some light landscaping done. Have the professional pictures taken when your house, including the garage, is ready for pictures. You want the very best first impression when your house goes live on the MLS. After that, find the place you want to move to next. You no longer have to worry about what you're going to do if someone gives you an offer and wants you to move quick. You have handled your belongings, made all the hard decisions already and you are ready for the next real estate journey. Thank you for listening. This is Jeanette McIntosh of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Florida Realty, wishing that all your real estate dreams come true. If you have any questions about anything I said, feel free to reach out. I don't mind answering. Thank you again.